Greetings and salvations, the Zunthoff Neverborn, the abyss that slumbers, and you are listening to Red Eye Rants, the show that dares to ask the questions, when are we finally going to get these death squads from Trump so we can go after Disney? The answer to this question and many more will be answered by our panel of experts, that includes Frank, who is in charge of the torches, and Aunt Farty, who is in charge of the pitchforks. So, how are you guys doing today? <laughs> Apparently, Farty has devolved, ladies and gentlemen. I, on the other hand, am doing great. Am I only in charge of torches, though? Because I, I would kind of like to be, uh, kind of like to be in charge of pitchforks as well. Well, you could be in charge of the pitchforks and uh, torches, and we can upgrade Farty into salting the earth where Disney once stood. Ah, uh, because I don't know about you, but just about everything that company has done lately has made me want to basically burn it to the ground. Now, here's a question for you. Do we actually let the people who work there get out of the buildings first, or do we burn it with them inside it? Because I'm not quite sure if I want to blame everybody who works there, but oh, dear God in heaven, what is wrong with these um, people? I'd like to pour stale gorilla jizz on them if we're going to let them out of the building. I think that's a good compromise there. We can cover them in stale gorilla jizz instead of burning them alive, and I'm sure that they'll accept that compromise, because compromise is what makes America great. Yes, indeed. We'll have them fill out a form first, so to make sure it's all nice and legal with disclaimers. What the fuck is a gorilla jizz? Gorilla jizz. Jizz. Tanks off, we collect it in a bucket. Oh, right. Yeah, you can usually get that off the internet these days. Oh, see, so we, we don't even have to manually stimulate the gorillas ourselves. Someone's already done it for us. The wonders of capitalism. Woohoo! Any rate here. We've already here discussed at great length the horror that was Star Wars The Last Jedi. I don't think we need to reiterate that too much other than to point out that that was, again, Disney's fault. What the hell's wrong with these people? But now we have, of course, everybody's talking about a Captain Marbles. Full disclosure, I've only seen parts of it by bootleg. I couldn't stomach it. So a lot of what I'll be talking about is basically from other people's reviews. I don't know if either of you watched it. No, I refuse to spend money on anything Disney for the foreseeable future. Great, we're the perfect people to review this train wreck. (laughs) Okay, I want to discuss first the part where she goes, what is, I think it's binary, whatever that means entirely. I guess it means she gets super superpowers. She goes Super Saiyan and flies into space. Now, she does cover her face, which is well and proper if you are of the Islamic faith, but she lets a shock of her hair like a mohawk stick out of her space helmet, which clearly does tempt angels down from heaven to rape her, which is in violation of the Quran. Your thoughts on this? Well, the helmet looks stupid. The costume looks stupid. The character looks... Computer generated Uh, at that point, actually. Yeah, but I was going to say more disinterested, and I wish we could get more disintegration on the character. Can we get more disintegration on Captain Marvel, please? Can someone work on that at Disney? Just disintegrator? You know, here's uh, something I want to point out that I know this Black sounds Disney? weird. You, you have to be pretty old to know this, but when they came out with the Superman movies originally with, with Reeves, oh, God. they came out with Supergirl. I don't know if you guys remember this movie. It was yeah, a I lot of Christmas. But I do want to point this out here. She may, wasn't, somebody said, oh, that's a Mary Sue. And I said, really? They dumped her in the, in the Phantom Zone and made her crawl through literal shit. Uh-huh. Like, they made their main character climb through shit, okay? Talk about kicking somebody while they're down. Seriously. <laughs> she went in the, in the vagina. Flag. I mean, my God, that was that was pretty a brutal part. I mean, it was an interesting movie. She's clearly invulnerable. And then they said, okay, we're going to depower her and toss her in the Phantom Zone and made her climb through shit. I just want to say that they are, you can beat up your main character a little bit. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. Captain Marvel, from everything I've seen, the problem is I was expecting a train wreck, and what I got was just kind of boring from what I've heard. I've heard people just kind of going, it was, it was pretty bland and dull. Like, there isn't a character arc. There's more like a character line. Yeah, it's uh, from from everything I understand, and I was talking about this on the drinking game, is that I had watched Young Ripa's review. I don't know if anyone's watching of his videos, but he was talking about how everything just seems not completely terrible. If you're going in as like a normie, but just entirely disinterested and entirely just bored with everything. And that kind of translates to the audience who, who are there as comic book fans who know what the hell the story's supposed to be as opposed to what Disney handed us on a big stinking shit covered platter. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. That's like, you say, well, how come dead for the Iron Man? And, you know, now I'd say a lot with, oh, you know, oh, how come they're making so much money? How come they've been box office hits? Well, because the, the characters are charismatic, the audience likes them. Yeah, it's and almost as if that they put the character framework before everything else. And then they put yeah. the storytelling in, and then they just let things happen organically. It's almost like they knew what they were doing from a narrative yeah. standpoint. Quick side note, I'm still on subject. If you look this one up on YouTube, there was a Deadpool video game. And the voices on that. Are you talking about the Deadpool video game that had a different voice actor than Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, that's the one. Had a, yeah, had a different voice actor to Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like Ryan Reynolds. Sort of, that's, well, I went into the movie, you say. Okay, the part where I have to hand out toilet paper, we'll edit that out later. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nolan North is the guy you're talking about, Party. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's, that's what I thought, you know, Deadpool was going to see him. And I like it when, when characters do, they do do that, it's okay. So have we ever heard Deadpool? Yes. And when has he ever sounded like every tough guy spoke like this? Every tough guy all at the same voice. Well, that was the that was the 1980s, you know. Every... No, 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 no. That just sounds like you were gra- gargling gravel. Yeah, yeah, that that was in the noughties because Christian Bale was one of the, the fuckers that was doing it. Even so, even though they, were, they really overdid certain things in movies, it wasn't entirely bad. Even though the character was predictable, at least they had character arcs. There were some parts of it. I, I can't really say there's been a lot of bad super movie. I mean, well, okay, Green Lantern. That one had some issues. Okay. <laughs> the problem isn't that the superhero movies aren't bad. It's just that they're getting boring and they're getting old and they're getting stale. And admittedly, I, I tell everyone this. I don't care about Marvel since Age of Ultron, the Marvel movies, because Age of Ultron was just such a letdown. It was such a boring movie. It was just, okay, Pinocchio jokes, trying to sell us on Pinocchio, good job. Guardians of the Galaxy, okay, great. You you know, you had your Mary Poppins joke in there, and then everyone all of a sudden lost their shit for Mary Poppins. The reason why I find these movies so boring now is because they've become... They know they've become commercials for another Disney property. And if it were selling just another Marvel property, fine, whatever. But it's selling the entirety of Disney. It feels hollow and it feels empty when they do that. I'm not saying that they shouldn't bolster sales or whatever. I am Sorry. saying that it feels hollow. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm fine with uh, you burping during my soapboxing here. But it feels no, 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 hollow. No, 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 no. Give it a second. You'll spill it. Okay. <laughs> the fart that traveled around the world. But it feels hollow, you know what I mean? Like, it feels just, like, devoid of anything fun just to try and sell you something. Like those old, like Captain Planet, right? Like, Captain Planet could have been a good show if it just pulled its nose away from its butthole to stop sniffing its farts for a second and go, hey, here's an interesting show. This is why pollution's bad. But here's all this action and stuff. Here's all the fun stuff. But, 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 why would Captain Planet sniff his own ass all on the... Because he needs to breathe thing. in that toxic greenhouse gas, Barty. Yeah, yeah somebody's got to, and he does it. He just sucks it all in. Sucks yeah, in all those uh, cow farts. I could almost deal with the cross-selling, and that wasn't too bad, because at least it was honest commercialism. The yeah. moment they start putting agendas in it is really the point where I completely lost it. And Marvel is nothing but agendas. The Skrulls are the shapeshifters, right? They were the bad guys. Uh, yeah. The Super Scroll was the big bad guy. The Scrolls were yeah. always bad guys. But from what little I've confirmed, the Scrolls are basically Muslims now. And the Kree want to build a space wall because orange alien bad or something. It's ridiculous. Okay, you know, we just let the Scrolls onto your planet. It's okay. They, I mean, they're just sitting there going, what the f- why are you putting this crap in here that you do change? The uh, funny thing is, the funny thing is, from everything I've read and everything I've watched so far, and all of these reviews about Captain Marvel have all talked about how badly they retcon half of the Marvel Cinematic Universe just to shoehorn this character in. 
Yeah. Oh, and what is it? Nick Fury loses his eye to a cat scratch. Are you right. effing kidding me? Cannon played out. It's head cannon played out. That's all it is. <laughs> it's... Someone had the idea, like, oh, it wouldn't it be wouldn't it be cool and fun if Nick Fury lost his eye to a cat? Because everyone likes cats, right? And then a couple of people laughed around the table, thinking, ah, "That's funny." Then the problem was, is there wasn't somebody who said, "Yeah, but if we actually did that, that'd be pretty stupid." I hate to beat a dead horse with this analogy because I'm I'm going to use it again, and I I feel dirty for doing so. But they're all high on their own freaking farts, man. They're all high on the mm-hmm. methane coming out of their ass because they're too busy snorting it as it comes out. Was it Fury's eye already explained? Oh yeah, he lost his eye because he trusted somebody. That's yeah, the official so line. They... But apparently, who he trusted was a cat that he picked up. So they retcon the entire. <laughs> Thing. Before, I would have been like really interested in seeing the scene where he trusted somebody and lost his eye. But he'd be like, oh, man, because that sounds interesting and to find out it's a cat clawing his eye. It's one of those subverting expectation things they like to do. Oh, Not even geez. subverting. Subversion would be like, oh, hey, this is like a really interesting idea. But they, they didn't even do that. It's not even an interesting or original idea. Well, no, like, as, no, they are subverting, but they're not subverting it with a good idea. They're subverting it with something stupid. If you're going to subvert an idea, I'll, I'll whatever you, you're... I'll give you that one. If you want to do subversion right, you need an idea that people are expecting, and then you need to do something else that's even better. Subverting does... If you're, if you're a director out there and you're listening, subverting an idea does not involve doing something they don't expect. It has to be something they don't expect that's better than what they're expecting. So. If they're expecting the good guy to win, then you have the good guy lose. He has to lose in a way that's better. Now, I'm not saying that he needs to win. I'm saying it has to have more emotional impact. It has to be something that furthers the plot. It has to be something where you go, oh my God, that was terrible, but it hits you in where it counts. Not Ray's looking for her parents and finds out they're dead in a ditch. And they were nobody, and they sold her for for drinking money. That's a subversion, but it's not a a better idea. What are they doing at Disney, honestly? Basically, here's the story. For some reason, back in this universe, back in the 1970s, when she's trying out to be a... 90s. Oh, 90s. 90s? It was 90s? That occurs... Oh, my God, that makes even less sense. Apparently, every misogynist on the planet is telling this woman, just quit. You can't do anything. You're just a girl. Apparently, the song, by no doubt, I'm Just a Girl plays during the climax. Yeah, I heard that. That is not the kind of battle song during a climax that gets my blood pumping. A dune walks into darkness or something that builds where you're just going, where the music alone or carries the feeling. you have to have a female artist. Have you guys ever heard I'm Just a Girl by No Doubt? It's a pretty happy yeah. song. Yeah. But they were subverting our expectations. Probably. It's a bubbly as fuck song. I hate No Doubt, so I I think it's like the best thing they've done, but it's still garbage. It's one of those happy, bubbly, look at me. Uh, Again, again, they subverted expectation with a stupid idea. That's not a good plan there. And now I'll say this. I'm not a big fan of No Doubt either, but at this point I pity them because forever their song has been tied to this cinematic masterpiece. Since I haven't seen it before, so I'd seen the movie, but I heard the song. For me, it's just going to remind me of the 90s. I think that was part of what they were going for, but it's not a climax song. It's somebody yeah. from YouTube made the movie, and I heard the CGI is terrible. Like, it really brings you out of the movie from what I've heard. But... It was done by an amateur in Blender. Yeah, something like that. Definitely, you should not have gone with No Doubt 100%. Do not do No Doubt. Barbie Girl would have been a better climax song. Barbie Girl! That would See, that, I would have left my ass really... off. See, that would have been funny. It's light. It's a fun song. It would have got the point across. That would have been a good subversion. That would have made me go, okay, now this movie isn't taking itself seriously. All right. All right. As long as they're they're having fun with it and they're not taking themselves seriously, okay. This is my concern here. Was all of Brie Larson's feminist bullshit trying to piss off every man on the planet deliberate? Or was she just being an idiot? And my, my theory is, is somebody's put out that it was a deliberate marketing ploy by Disney because they knew they had a steaming pile of crap. And they said, you know what we can do? We can create so much controversy that people will see it no matter what. 
Well, I think what they did was is that they just wanted to get people talking about it. And let's face it, since, I don't know, since 2012, since maybe, I, and I hate to evoke, I hate to invoke it right now because just stupid shit happens whenever you say these two words in succession with one another. I think since Gamergate, people have been looking for a reason to be outraged. I mean, I think maybe even before that, people well, yeah. were, were looking for a reason to be outraged, but I think it's gotten worse with the progression of social media and how we've how Tim Pool has even did the veil on how social media like Facebook, Twitter, Mastodon, places like this go out of their way to isolate people, to make sure that people stay in a certain bubble and to kind of stir the pot. That's what we've seen happening. And I think a lot of it, and I don't want to rag on social media too much because I have my own views. People might may or may not agree, and I don't want your uh, viewership to get a little uh, nuked here, but it's the power of the internet, and it's the power of social media, and it's what we've come to because we allowed these companies to take advantage of us. We just keep letting it happen. So you think it is a deliberate ploy on their part? Do you think they just... Oh, yeah, definitely. I think... Do you think it just got out of control from them, or did they think they knew exactly what they were doing? Cause... No, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew the power social media had. They are, to an extent, I'm not going to say 100, 100%, I'm not going to throw out a, a hard conspiracy here. To an extent, they're in cahoots with, with the social media platforms. They know what social media is going to do. And all they have to do is float something out there. All they have to do is put an idea out there. Someone is going to overreact to it. Someone is going to have a reaction that is so outrageous and outlandish, radicalized, that it's going to spread. It's going to take root and it's going to spread like a virus. And they know that's what's going to happen. And evidence that I have to support, they knew what they were doing and they did it on purpose, was they withheld the critic reviews until. I think it was last Wednesday, just this last Wednesday, when they released all the critic reviews, they said, okay, review embargo lifted, go ahead and let loose what we paid for, our uh, our review pieces. Yeah, I read there were some reviewers who were, what was that one French guy, like, they're not paying me enough? Yeah. Like, that one French review was just, it was like, you guys did not pay me enough to review this movie well. As he spins around some red wine and gives a cigarette. Although I think the general <laughs> consensus is that it's kind of meh. That it's just yeah, a boring. Yeah, I mean, it's just like Ghostbusters in 2016. Ghostbusters wasn't a terrible movie. It wasn't a good movie. I recommend you stay away from it because... It's expensive it to go just... to the movies. It's not your worth your money. Right. There were better films showing, and I feel like a fucking tool. I wanted to support the movie. And I am a huge Ghostbusters fan, all right? I've got my own Proton Pack that I built from scratch. I'm 3D printing two more Proton Packs. I've got my own flight suit. I've got my own gear. I'm all geared up for it, right? I hey, I'm a big fan of Ghostbusters International. They should have used that. There, there's so much you could have done with that. I, I was not able to get through International. It just felt like pandering to me. But then again, that's what social media did to me. It radicalized me in a way, and I, and I recognize that it radicalized me in a way. So now I try to limit it. The point that I'm making is I love Ghostbusters. I went to the theater immediately after work on a Thursday night to go see the first showing that night right after work in my flight suit. I was there center row, and I, was, I wanted it to be a good movie. I wanted to justify. It was 30 years later, 20 years later, that we've, we're finally getting a, a Ghostbuster movie for the audience, right, for everyone involved. We were going to introduce an entirely new audience, right? Entirely new generation to a fandom we loved. And then when the stupid trailers came out and they, they were way off the mark with everything. And I'm just, all right, this, this scene, this seems. Well, you shouldn't, right. not, not to well, belabor the point much, but considering yeah. the director's history has all been doing female parodies of other better movie franchises you couldn't have expected it to end well right and i don't i, I keep telling the people this it's like i don't think it was a terrible movie but it, it was so poorly executed the biggest problem and i and i will defend this point to the death the biggest problem with ghostbusters as compared to captain marvel in this instance is that ghostbusters was 
Paul Feig didn't want to do it. He didn't want to have anything to do with the project and was repeatedly asked to do it. To me, that sounds like harassment. To me, that sounds like he was bullied into doing it. But that's neither here nor there. So it's what they did to Bill Murray, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they badgered him into it. The point that I'm trying to get across is that it's the same thing that happened. Someone said the trailer looks bad. A bunch of us said the trailer looks bad. A lot of us were still cautiously optimistic. Some of us blindly optimistic, especially in the Ghostbusters fan community. The vitriol, the the division that social media had caused, and it did this in Captain Marvel. We see this again. The division that the social media had caused was that I can't enjoy something or dislike something now. It Now it's an issue. Now if I think that a movie is bad, I can't just think the movie's bad, share my opinion with it, and walk away. And I can't think a movie is good to share my opinion and walk away. We've allowed... Now it's a war. Now it's a war. Now you have picked this side. And the thing is, is I think the point is, does the movie industry think that translates into dollar? Because... I would think that if you get the fan base to love your movie, like, look at Alita. I didn't think it was going to do well. When I saw the trailers, I'm like, eh, that's not going to do so hot. It looks, uh, the eye thing's a bit weird. But because the story was so well done, the fan, everybody rallied to say, we need, go out there and see this movie. I had like four different people tell me to go see it. I didn't because I've been way too busy to go to a movie theater, but... I, you know what? If I was going to go, it would be one of the ones I would consider going to. I've pretty much written off going to movies ever again. With the lead in this instance, it's the opposite effect. There are so many people saying, go see it, go see it, go see it. Now, I was stoked to see it opening day. I wanted to see it opening day, but I have just started a new job three weeks ago, right when Alita opened. I haven't had the time or the money to go see it. I wanted to see it this weekend. I wanted to go tonight, actually to go see it and i would have hopped the bus to go see it if my wife wasn't willing to go i could have been in the theater right now watching it but the problem is is that the although there is the issue what if you don't like it well like that that you are you there no no i mean will you feel like you can say you don't like it if i watch it yeah because i'm not i I don't blindly like i i can be a fan of something and well do you think you're gonna get jumped over it done it See, if you watch Marvel and you don't like it, you you basically get jumped on the internet. I've literally seen people go posting going, you hate women. And I'm going, are you a troll? Are you for real? Did you not listen to the list of problems? But in Alita, I think you could actually say, I just don't like it. And nobody's going to get on your case. No no one's going to care. But like I was saying is that just like social media can ruin the movie going experience or something that might not be good. It can also ruin the movie going experience for something that could be good. So like I was on Twitter the other day and I had retweeted this dude who had said, go see Alita because Captain Marvel sucks. Something to that extent. Uh, yeah. And I, I used his tweet as an example. I'm like, all right, guys, I am done. I no longer have any interest to go see this in the theaters. And he started this, this, this whole big Twitter fight with me going, well, you're only in it for Captain Marvel, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not it at all. I'm out because the way people on social media are, are portraying everything, it's an us versus them type deal. And I don't want that to be in the back of my head when I'm sitting in the theater trying to enjoy something. I do agree. Well, I think- like, Alita should not have been dragged into this. Yeah. Like- the thing that shit me about most modern movies now is that, like, yeah, we've been looking forward to, to a Ghostbusters fucking 30 years. Now we're finally getting the one that we're asking for, but we have to get bullshit in the meantime. You know, why do we have to have it? Like, why do women's fucking movies fucking bomb? Because now we're sick of the bullshit being brought up every fucking movie. I was going to give the Ghostbusters 2016 thingy a chance right up until the point where someone said something and then everyone's gone, right, fucking Every kind of doesn't like this movie. You're a bunch of neckbeard fucking asshole trolls. You can all get fucked. And now I'm going to purposefully go and do a bunch of rewrites just to stick it to fucking computer nerds and shit like that. And then it was like, hang on, no, that's personally attacking the audience. Same yeah. thing with Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, no, everyone was in for fucking Ray. What's Ray's backstory? We really want to know about Ray. Oh, she's a nobody and a nothing. 
oh, you shit, it's a Mary bloody Sue. Well, you can't say that. That's that's Mary Sue shaming. And now with Captain Marvel. I mean, I've liked all the MCU movies right up till now. And no problems with Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, or fucking... And then they go, right, well, this has all happened with fucking Infinity War. Now we're going to introduce a bunch of new cunts. Is this Sheila. And I'm like, rightio, what do we got here? Please don't say anything stupid. Uh, all right, she said something silly. And it's not dumb enough. Uh, and then in the last week or so, it's like, she said something so mind-blowingly, galactically, fucking universally retarded. You've really got to hear it. All right, so... Yeah, I think it would have been better off if they just kept their mouth shut and just let the movie play. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. I hate, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. It goes back to what I was saying earlier, though, that we've allowed the internet to radicalize us. Yeah. We've allowed the internet, uh, and we've we've allowed the powers that run the internet. We may or may not agree that there are people running the internet. There, there are. There, there are at least organizations running the internet or with ideologies, and they want people to be black or white. Everything is this or that. That's just not the case with human beings. We're complex organisms with a very complex brain, with very complex thoughts. And on that, what you were saying there, was they'll go and take the controversial comment over the, the silly comment. I mean, no one gives a rat's ass that breed last and likes to go out to the woods and fart on the little critters and you know, scurry around. Like a thicket shit. No, 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 no. They, they want to know what the feminist opinions are on this feminist movie. Well, I want to bring up the last point before I forget it here. What we had is we had The Last Jedi, which made a ton of money, even though it was pretty bad. But then we had Solo, which is pretty much, I think, was a protest for people not seeing it. They hated The Last Jedi and said, you know what? I'm done with the franchise. And that's what happened to Solo. Because I saw parts of it, it wasn't that bad. My question is, is this movie is well on its way to making over 160,000. It's open 160 million its first weekend. Okay. And I, I, think, I think it was already at 180 when I looked at oh, box yeah. office mojo. Oh, yeah. It's going to make a good chunk of money this, this season. It's going oh, yeah, to make it's money. A, it's a Disney movie. It's a Marvel film. People are going to go watch My it. My question is, is do you think it's going to affect Endgame, which is the next one coming up? Is there going to be people going, wow, I was pissed about this. I'm not going to see the next one. No. No one was pissed off as much as they were when Solo came around. Uh, ah, so you don't like, think this movie really... is really pissing people off like it did with The Last Jedi? This one isn't insulting well, the fans. Oh, yeah, no. No, 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 no. It, it got to a biblical st- uh, stage with Star Wars. <clears throat> usually when the things get to a point of someone goes, oh, yeah, or else what, that's usually the point where it simmers down. This time, Disney's gone, oh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to like our fucking slop and you're going to love it. They're like, no, we're not. Disney's going, yeah, or else what? They go, right, well, we all had to go and see fucking The Last Jedi just to see how bad it was for ourselves, just so as we, did, we don't get sucked into missing out the good one. I, um, or else I think what? differently. I, I think differently here. There's two points to make. Before Star Wars had been dormant since, what, 2002, 2003, somewhere around there, when they had <laughs> just wrapped up the new trilogy? Yeah. So there was quite a big gap in the movies and i think what happened with solo is that people didn't really go see solo because it wasn't a mainline star wars movie it was just a star wars story and seeing how not well rogue one did people were just kind of whatever it just it did the thing the only reason to watch rogue one isn't even the reason to watch rogue one it's just to watch the last scene in rogue one which is when vader gets onto the starship and starts messing dudes up left and right ah i see your point so you think that captain marvel's more of a rogue one movie and not a last jedi movie no uh the point that i wanted to make was that when star wars got revived by disney people were already starting to like okay well it's not the mainline movie we're starting to get overloaded with new star wars stuff right star wars fans are notoriously picky we've seen this People still bang on Jar Jar Binks for being a thing, which, to each their own. I'm not going to levy any ill intent against them because I don't agree. I kind of um, like I'm the first, to... the, the, the prequels. I know I'm right. weird I'm like not, that. I'm not going to get into the boat of, <clears throat> you guys are stupid for not liking the prequel. You either liked them or you didn't, and that that's you. The difference with Marvel is, 
that when they had started, they were off to a rocky start. The first Hulk film was terrible. Oh, yeah. It was oh. terrible. Iron Man was a little shaky. I think we can all agree it was a little shaky, but it was a decent yeah. film. Yeah, it was decent. And from that point, they kind of got the ball rolling. And they, they weren't like, you know, massive breakout successes until we start getting into the Avengers movies. And I think what's happening is because we have so many comic fans in general are a little bit more forgiving than a hardcore Star Wars fan, if you want to compare the two fandoms. I got gotcha. you. They're not as picky. So the burnout isn't there for a, for a Marvel fan as there would be for a Star Wars fan. Plus, you have to take into consideration that... So uh, End- Endgame, you think, is not going to be all that affected by I don't, whatever this I don't think out. Endgame will be affected when you, when you consider every external factor. And there's a lot of external factors to consider. No, I, don't think I, I, I think I agree with you. I think I agree much. with you. I do think, however, the next Marvel film will be affected because it's Endgame, right? What's after Endgame? No one cares because now you've you've created a character who Disney and Marvel are coming out and stating in plain English that this is going to be the most powerful character in the MCU. No one wants to see a character who's OP. No one wants it. No one wants an overpowered uh, character. No one wants a character that can beat every villain with just the swing of her hand. She punches Nobody out spaceships. That. Right. No one wants that. What's <laughs> going to happen is we're going to see people get really bored with Marvel see, films. Like, we've already started seeing it, especially with Ant-Man and Wasp. It only made, like, $600 million or something like that. It did it made its money back, but... They're not in a rush to greenlight any more Ant-Man films. Personally, I was bored of the Marvel films, starting with Age of Ultron. Since then, I've kind of only really watched the Avengers films. I didn't really care about the other movies outside of it. It took me forever to watch Ant-Man. It took me forever to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp. And then it took me twice as long to watch Infinity War. And I thought that was the worst that Marvel had to offer up to this point. Really? So I mean, that's just me. I'm, I'm after, huh? Okay. No, no. I can, I can see your point. I mean, I was kind of when I saw it. Eventually, I was like, you know, there's parts of this that are individual scenes are really good, but I'm not sure if it really is. It, it feels more like a series of scenes, not really a cohesive. No, it definitely was a collection of scenes. It's like Ghostbusters 2016. It was like when you compare Ghostbusters 2016 to Fan Four Stick, it was just a bunch of people sitting around talking and then you compare that to the 2005 2004 version of fantastic four and then the later rise of the silver surfer which was only marginally better and people rag to death on how bad fantastic four and fant four stick were ghostbusters 2016 had the same problems and now we're going to get into the territory of marvel is going to have these same problems because now they're introducing this character who can defeat all. It's going to get stale real quick. But everything else after that. Because Endgame is the main line Avengers movie. Yes. No, no. That's Avengers the movies. movie. That is the yeah. movie. It, everybody's going to see it. Well, it's not It's not in fact the movie. It's basically it is a giant movie where things change around. Apparently after this, Iron Man's supposed to be a little teenage black girl. Things like that. A lot of the characters have changed around. The last, the, the Spider Man we've got. In regards to Spider Man, is Spider Man is reverting back to Sony after Far From Home? That's already happening. After Far From Home happens, Sony gets Spider Man back. Really? Is the, is, is, you know, the, well, yeah. Is I mean, the the Spidey verse is, is that so? Not sure. Not sure which one that is. Any rate, um, we covered all the points and topics about this that I wanted to. Is there anything you guys want to address? Because this is probably a good point to wrap it up here. I don't want this to go too long. I just want people to, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your lives. That's not me. That's not what I do. I just want to urge people to, if you're especially on social media, just just to think a little more critically about what's being posted, what's being said, and to try and keep your head about you. Everyone, and I don't want to sound like a bleeding heart liberal either, but we all got to live on this fucking dirty rock, right? Floating in space. What is the point? of making each other's lives shitty just so that you can feel a couple of seconds of it, you know, a little bit of rush of endorphins just to feel a little better about your day, you know? I agree with you. So this is one thing that, that I don't, I've just sort of had a 
thought about with you know the, the population growing up on the internet. They don't have social. It, it's, it's it's mainly because they haven't been taught what basic human interaction. That is, in general, if you don't agree with something or something gets hit up your nose. You know, the first thing you do is see if you can move away from. But you got these people who, oh, this movie's fucking not what we wanted. Fuck what we did. I, I think that personally, that what we're dealing with is a great deal of addiction to outrage, where people just want to get pissed off about something. And I gotta admit, I'm there too. I mean, you've all heard me say, let's burn Disney to the ground and salt the earth where it once stood. And I'm only semi-joking about that because I hate to say it. It's more along the lines of, I would like to cause Disney a lot of money so they stop doing this bullshit. And I think what we've reached a point is, is that we need to stop getting angry about stuff. You have to stop letting it get into you. And more, you need to start encouraging people to just ignore these things. You know, just say, look, you don't like it. Don't spend the money on it. Tell other people, don't spend the money on it, but don't go into great detail. Don't rant. Don't rave. Go, this is dull. This is boring. In fact, I think that's far more damning for this movie to hear that it is dull and predictable than if it was horrible. I'd almost wish it was horrible because then there'd be some value in watching it. At least it would shock me. At least it would make me laugh. At least I could make fun of it. From what little I've seen of it, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. I don't even want to nitpick it. I don't even want to give it any attention. This video here is the most attention I want to give to it. And it's more about, I wanted to talk about the people reacting to the movie, not the movie itself. So I think at this point, the best thing people can do is when you see something horrible, go, that's horrible. I don't want to pay attention to it. And if people start going, you hate women, go, no, I just don't want to deal with this. It offends me and I want a stress-free life. Go away. And when you ignore people, trust me, there's nothing more offensive to these liberals than when you say, I don't care. Because for them, the opposite of, of caring is hating. But that's not the case. Caring is a, it goes from zero to 100. It doesn't go to negative 100. When you don't care, you don't hate somebody, you just have no emotional commitment whatsoever. That's something they can't get through. When you say, I don't care about Captain Marvel, you're saying, I hate it to them. But that's not the case. When I say, I don't care, I have no emotional investment. I would rather spend my time on something else. Anyway, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Any last minute, real quick ideas before we end this? Nothing? Okay. Nope, I'm good. All right, it's been real. It's been fun. I think it's been real fun. And I hope everybody out there has a pleasant day. Last word? Have a great weekend, folks. Babies. Woo!